how do you see now my slides? Uh, I see the slide and also the next slide uh, view. Okay. Do you know how to change it? Um, display settings, maybe? Yeah. Um, yes, now I see just the presenting slide. Okay, great. Um, Hello everyone again. Uh, today's presentation. Uh, so I'm presenting today chapter 10, which is about tables. And we will discuss what is a table and what is the difference between the uh, table and the classical version of the data frames. Um, so tables are the data frames, uh, but it makes uh, working um, um, on the large data sets uh, easier. Uh, we are using package tidyverse. Um, so tables packages installed in the tidyverse uh, package. Um, my professor was <laughs> uh, very often mentioning that it's the fanciest way to uh, work on um, like the tables uh, because it's um, really creates um, the easy, it, it's a, um, we will just um, easily use uh, and manipulate this data uh, while we are using the tables. So um, to, uh, to use a table uh, functions, we need to install packages uh, like a tidyverse. I'm sure that if everyone attended uh, previous book club meetings, they already had this, but uh, if you don't have, so we need to install uh, tidyverse and then uh, run the library tidyverse to just um, start using the tidyverse. And uh, to the right side, uh, you see the command and uh, what is displayed after running that code. Uh, so one of the core um, um, package in Tidyverse is table. Um, so um, in this slide, uh, so there's a different types of uh, ways to create the table. Uh, the first uh, command to the right side table. So uh, after writing the table, you just put manually, um, enter manually uh, the content of the table, what you want to create. Uh, to the right side uh, in the middle, um, the code and the results after running the code, uh, you can see. So table uh, X defines like a first row from one to five. Uh, and as a column Y uh, includes only ones and um, column Z includes the function X squared plus Y. So this is how we could create a manually table. Um, another version uh, of just um, creating the table is to retrieve exactly uh, already existed um, data frame. Uh, so we know that in R there is a package Iris or Iris. And we can trans we could transform using is a lower dash table um, function. We could tra transform um, data frame into the table and uh, in the lower um, to the right side on the screen, you, you see the uh, command and also the output of the um, function like in after running is table iris. And uh, there is also the third way to um, enter manually the uh, data. Uh, it's a TR, TR -ebul, uh, which is a, like a shorter version of the transformed table uh, where um, column names are defined by the tilde uh, and the name of the uh, column, like a tilde X, tilde Y, and tilde uh, Z. So by writing that, we will just define the column name. And uh, also you are uh, entering the entries for each column and separate them by commas. So, and in the output, in the results, you see that this is a two by three uh, table uh, where like X includes A and B, Y two and one, and Z uh, 3.6 and uh, 8.5. So um, here just we discussed like a three um, commands, like a table, S table and the TR table, which just helps us to create tables. Um, the one difference between table and the um, data frame is that 
in the table, we could name uh, columns, like we can give very strange names to the uh, table columns, like a, a smile, uh, even the space or some numbers, which we are not allowed to do in um, data frames while we are work working on data tables. Um, and uh, the lower, look at this to the right side is just use the same type of code table, but we are just naming uh, the columns differently, like a given smile and space and numbers as a name of the um, column. So um, now the another thing which uh, was discussed in the chapter was what is the difference, what are the differences between table and uh, data frame? And there are two differences how the table and data frame are printed and how we can sub uh, subset uh, data from the table. Um, in the next slide, uh, I try to uh, just show uh, how, what is the difference when, when we use the code print, uh, how does the data frame is printed and displayed on the screen uh, and uh, when we are, printing the table, how it is uh, presented. So um, to the right side, it's a data frame presentation. And uh, if you are just print the uh, data frame, it will just display the whole uh, data set, uh, which is not comfortable while we are working on the big data sets. But uh, for tables case, uh, you will see first 10 rows only. Um, so this is a major difference. Um, but uh, we can set also the um, some um, options. We can change the options while working on uh, data frames. For example, um, to the right side here, uh, there's a presentation. We could just define how many rows you want to see and how many columns you want to see while using, uh, using the print. Um, code. Uh, to the right side is um, use the New York flight 13 like a package. Um, if you would like to run this code, you need to just um, install this package, New York flight 13, and then you will be able to um, uh, manipulate with this data. Uh, and uh, here in the print function, uh, n defines the rows, the number of rows. So we manually just set and uh, told the uh, told R to just display only 10 rows. And then when width is uh, equals to infinity, it tells that uh, all the columns which are in the data set should be just displayed. And uh, um, as you see here, there here is presented like a two, three even layers. I was not able to just um, uh, copy paste the third row as well. But uh, in the first row are presented like in this, this first 10 rows uh, and columns, like a, which includes, uh, which are in this data set. And the second uh, table is a continuation of presenting other variables which are in this data. And even it goes to the third, uh, third line, like a time hours. Um, so, but we, you can also define here the how many, um, how many um, columns you want to uh, see. And, and to the left side, to the left side are, um, um, like it, uh, is described how you will set how many rows and columns you want to see. So first, let's discuss the first um, code. It's an options table print. So maximum n table print minimum n. So if uh, it means that if more than n, if the table, if the table includes more than n rows, then it will uh, print only m rows, and you just set so how many um, should be m, like a three, four, or um, it's up to you. Uh, another option is to uh, use options table print mean infinity, so it shows all the rows. If you have a small data set, you could just use it, and it won't be. Uh, it will not dis uh, display uh, display only ten rows because uh, by default, R when you use print, R presents only ten rows. Um, uh, sorry, and the third uh, function is um, options table with if. Um, this allows print all columns regardless of the width of the screen. 
So as you see to the right side, uh, if there is not enough space, it just displays below the first like the 10 rows, the new columns. So this is a uh, here, uh, hopefully I'm not very fast. Um, I don't know um, if you have questions up to now, we could just discuss. If not, um, I can continue and discuss the second difference. Yeah. The pace is okay, Lily? Yeah, uh, it's, it's good. Uh, so I think no one has uh, any questions at the moment. Yeah, there are two thumbs up. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Um, so, and the second difference between uh, tables and data uh, frames is subsetting. How do we subset um, the um, specific entry or the column? Uh, mostly uh, we are using the uh, brackets, like the square brackets and dollar sign. So uh, square brackets is used to extract name and, or position uh, by name and or, or position and the dollar sign only extracts uh, by name. Uh, and let's see now the uh, code and uh, how do we see this. So before uh, DF is a name of the data set, the, uh, sorry, it's a name of the table which I created uh, manually. So if say, for example, we can put here, first you put the name of the data set table. So Eris or New York flights or any of them. In my case, it was like a DF and we, not in my case, in the books, I use a DF uh, table. So DF dollar sign and X will display uh, the first column of the DF table. Do you see the, how the results are presented? And uh, uh, if you want to also retrieve like a X column, uh, but using uh, square brackets, then uh, you put DF square brackets and in the parentheses you put uh, the name of the column. This is how do we how we extract uh, from table by name, special uh, column. And to the right side, you can see extract by position. So if you want to um, just present the first column, uh, then you use df um, square brackets one. So it will just present first column uh, of the uh, from the table. Uh, and also, uh, while we are working on tidyverse, we are using pipes to uh, subset um, to connect to the data frame. So, and if we if we use pipe, then we put like a data um, a table name, like a data uh, frame name. Then pipe dot uh, dollar sign and x, and it will just display. Again, like a first column, like it, uh, like it was displayed in DF dollar sign X. So it's a similar um, thing. And uh, uh, if you if you want to use a bra square brackets, you just put pipe dot and then uh, square bracket and the name of the uh, column. So this is a um, how we are subsetting information um, columns or um, by name and uh, position from the table. Um, but sometimes uh, you might need to, so when you have a table, you might need to do some operations. To be honest, I don't know exactly what kind of operations are uh, um, needed to be done on data frames only. Uh, but if you discover that you need data frames, so you are able to transform back, to you know, turn back table into the uh, data frame. So, and you are using this command is dot data frame, and then you put the table name. So TB is a, will be the table name. Uh, and the class code just tells uh, when you run this code, if if it was transformed into the data frame, but they just to turn the table back to the uh, data frame, you use a, a code s dot data frame, and in the brackets you put the table name. Yes, this was a major part of the uh, chapter ten. Uh, I hope that I covered most of them. And yeah, floor is open for questions, or we could discuss. Yeah. I was disconnected to people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Uh, yeah, I think it was um, in that sense a relatively short uh, chapter. Mm -hmm. um, we can uh, we can have maybe some questions uh, if uh, if anyone has. But um, uh, in the meantime, I would maybe use the opportunity and ask uh, then one question. <laughs> Uh, so I don't know if in the chapter it was also mentioned um, why tables are useful or, for example, uh, when to use them, prefer using them instead of data frames. Yes, as I understand, uh, when you are working on large data sets, it's better to use tables. Uh, yeah. Okay. So why not really take away? Maybe if you plot something else, uh, it will be better. Yeah. Maybe the, the tables uh, take uh, less uh, space or something. I somehow remember from some previous time that, that maybe there's a space uh, issue, but I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. OK. But yeah, I also remember that there were some uh, operations and functions that you could do only with uh, using with uh, data frames and, and some with uh, tables. So, so that's why they, they exist both. And, and you have to know what is the class of, of your table uh, to know what kind of uh, operations you can do with it. So, uh, yeah. Okay, nice. Does anyone have any questions or comments? Mm -hmm. I, I will ask, are you using table um, more like in practice, which yeah. Personally, I use most of the time table. So first, what I do is um, just I have, for example, most of the time CSV files. I uh, load the CSV file in R and then I transform in tables and then start working. So the first day of the class, <laughs> our professor told us that for you, data frame does not exist. For you, exists only tables. So. Um, yeah, most of the time I use tables, yeah. Maybe it's because you are using the um, CSV files and it's a text file, yes. Uh, so maybe this is a reason, but if I have tables. No, it does not matter. Even for um, the packages like the tables, which are in R, like a uh, use or for class exercises we are doing with this New York flights or other like a um, built data frames still. So we were first retrieving the data and then transforming into a table and then starting, and then we were starting uh, working on data. So this was, okay. I could ask the questions uh, and I could just explore, sorry that I did not just de say like a deep like analysis yes. of why it is important, but maybe for our next meeting, I would just prepare even <laughs> okay. responses to your question. So I could just search and see uh, what has specific reasons. So um, why it's good and what kind of functions for what kind of functions and manipulations it's better to use people rather than data frames. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that would be very useful. Any, any other questions or comments? I have a question regarding the subsetting. Mm -hmm. uh, can you only do the double bracket subset or can you do as when you subset in data frame that you just use one, a single bracket with a comma to indicate like column and row? Uh, to be honest, I did not try. Let's, let's try together. So do you see the uh, R? Yeah. Uh, Okay, um, your question was it if we could use with one uh, bracket? Did I understand correctly? Yeah, so for example, you can, if you only wanted the first column, you would use single bracket, comma, one. But if you wanted to specify like a row and a column, you could do like three, comma, one or something like that. Okay, yeah. So we could use also comma one oh, to display great. the first column. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're more than welcome. 
But I think uh, that when you use, I don't know if you were also asking about the double brackets. I think if you use double brackets, then then that just gives the specific uh, cell object from. Oh, okay. In this in case, it's the first row because yes, there's no comma. Okay, still, but it's but I mean there are two brackets, so it's different from using single brackets. Okay, if you're using two brackets, uh, you already did yeah, that. But if you want one specific position, like in this dollar sign and X, it's also, but you want to, to retrieve the first, like a first entry of the first column in this. Do you want to? Um, Yes, I, I guess I meant if, if you just want to take one number, one specific number from any any row and, and any column. I don't know how to do it. And then maybe you have to include the double brackets and the position number, I'm not sure. I think you have to first include the column number as the row number and then column. Yes. I did. yes. Okay. Right. No. Yeah. It's a first entry. Um, yeah. And if you want to search, position. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay. So you are working mostly with tables. Uh, I understand. I personally yes, <laughs> but I I don't know. I didn't ask. Uh, to my professor, like as I told, like a first yeah. lecture, he just presented and table is fancier than sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Presenting data frames, so use it. So, and uh, he was subtracting points if we were just forgetting to transform data frames into tables. And this was how he forced us just to <laughs> use only tables. Yeah, I will definitely, I will definitely uh, find out like a more like a, and, uh, explanations why it's better to use tables than data frames. And in which cases do we need to work only on data frames? So mm -hmm. I will definitely find it. Okay, that would be very nice, thank you. So any other comments or questions? So if we don't have any questions regarding tables and we still have some time and you have more practice, practical, so maybe you can do some, uh, it doesn't matter in tables or tables, or some cross top tabulations or this kind of simple uh, things in R. Just who knows, it depends if you know how to do it. And like we are doing in a space SS some kind of cross tabulations. Uh, um, can you do this? No. Um, for the I don't know. We, we, for example, if we change the like, change was somewhere, we have data frame. Yes, from this flight. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if you just, uh, for example, to do this kind of thing, just, uh, if there is there, for example, uh, difference, um, uh, if there is like. Uh, yeah, I don't know. For we can take one one variable, mm -hmm. uh, and for this variable we can uh, see uh, the difference uh, in other variables, like how it cross tabulation in SPSS works. I, I can't explain now. Just... Okay, what we can do now, I to be honest, I'm not so expert just to come up with the exercises now by myself, uh, but. What we can do is that we could just go through and discuss exercises which are at the end of the chapter. And um, we can do some practice. Um, does it work? Yeah. Um, that, that, start yeah. Hmm? That, that would be also good, yeah. Yes. Well, what do you see now uh, uh, on my screen? Do you see yeah. it? Yeah, we see your screen. But what is presented on the screen? It is uh, R. Studio or book? Yes, R Studio. R Studio. Okay. Do you have an access to the chapter? Yes. Uh, so everyone uh, can access it if they um, click on this link. I will share it now in the chat. Mm -hmm.
Heidi data, maybe. Yeah, it's a 10.5 exercises. If you go to the 10.5 subchapter. Mm. We could just start working and go through all the questions. What are there? So, do we do do we have the? Um, yes, I have uh, them. Um, I think everyone might have already oh. taken them. <laughs> okay. So, first question is: How can you tell if an object is a table? So let's go to the R and use them. Um, empty cars. So when we put empty cars, this is a rebuilt like a data frame in the R, uh, we see how that how is a data frame uh, displayed in the R studio. So uh, it displayed all the variables. But we are lucky that it's a small data uh, frame. Now if you want to set transform it into table, so we put is lower score table and the name of the data set. So it's table MTR. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, by default, you see like the first 10 rows. And the question was, how can you tell if an object is a table? So first of all, it tells by itself, like a, uh, as a, in the comments, uh, uh, like after the, the result starts with a table and it tells you what is the size of the table. So two uh, rows and 11 columns. And then it also shows the names of the column and the, what type of uh, variables are in this column. It's like yes, this yeah. is very good. I like it very much that it shows the type of the, piece of the mm -hmm. data. And you also know what is it like, uh, how many rows are uh, just left, which are not presented. So this is a, how it is presented. And also, um, I don't know, it, sometimes uh, it was confusing us, uh, for us, for, um, okay, when we were creating tables, my professor's like a, uh, advice was uh, to name, um, for example, empty cars, empty cars dot table. And with table, I, we were guessing that this was kept as a table and not as a data frame. So we were just defining like this. All my tables, like a table names are defined in this way. If you find it useful, so that's a good. So, and then you can just retrieve into parse table and let's see what's a uh, table. I have a question, sorry. Uh, have just a normal data frame and table. So if you write like a views this data frame, we can see then it's a uh, yeah. If you, can, can mm -hmm. you just say yes, this table? Uh, do you want to see the view using view common to see the table? Yeah, can we do the same with the table? I mean, so yes, you can use view. Uh, to see the table as well. Yeah, look at this. Um, I'm using view empty cars table. So this is the table we know. And you yes, see it here. opens it. Yes, thank yeah, you. It opens it. Mm -hmm. You can just scroll down and see what are the variables. Okay. Um, so I think we are done with the first question. Okay, yeah. how can you tell if an object is a uh, table? So another question is compare and contrast the following operations on a data frame and equivalent, equivalent table. What is different? Why might the default data frame behaviors cause you frustration? So let's go and just try to, okay, I will copy all these comments in our script. Okay, let's create a, a data frame. This first um, row creates data frame named the DF. Um, and let's see if it creates data frame or not. Okay, and then display DF. 
Yeah, it's defined like a data frame, which the first column name is ABC and another column name is XYZ. Uh, and it can include just one entry, both of them include one entry. Let's then run DFX. So it retrieved like a first uh, column, but it did not do it actually. So we put here DFX. Uh, no, it presented the uh, second column's first, um, yeah, second column, but it guess, it just checked the first uh, letter of the uh, column's name. Okay, let's do the same now at the same time with DF table. Let's name table. And let's use the same codes here. And let's create table. Okay. So this is how we the same type of presentation. Now let's see the table. Uh -huh. It presents, it offers us uh, the whole name of the column and not only X. But if we put here only X, and if you have table, it tells you that um, there is no, like, a, there is no, no uh, column named as X. So the difference between using the data frame and table in this case is that uh, dollar sign just catches only X and it does not care what are the other letters in the column name when we are using data frame and displaces uh, that column, but data frame table needs like a full name uh, to display the column. As I know, one of the difference between table and data frames is that table is more strict with variables. So if you uh -huh. yes, don't type variable name that exists, you will get an error. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Yeah, so we need to write to write in this way. Okay, another test was here. Uh, X, Y, Z. So, DF, comma, X, Y, Z presented the first entry of the second column. Now let's try to do the same with DF table. So it presented the first um, the entry as well, like a first entry. There was no big problems, I guess. Please correct me if I'm uh, explaining not like correctly all this. Okay. So data frame C. So it present. It tells us that present both columns, A, B, C, and X, Y, Z. And then now let's see how it will work for table. Yeah, I don't see any difference. So as I understand, except the first case, uh, like for both for data frame and table, other, um, Codes were presenting the same, giving giving us the same results. Did you catch anything like a difference? No. Um, can you scroll up again for the second part? So I the second part. Yes. Ah, if you give me here. Mm -hmm. So 
So the second does give a different result. Like in the first case, it gives you the name of the of the row or column, and and then in the other, or I am now mixing up something. And in the other case, oh no, it does give the same. Okay, sorry. It, uh, it gives the same, but from data frame, it presents a in brackets. Yeah. Um, Quantities and uh, in this, when you are using table, it just display this without any. Yeah. Okay. Oops. Now it's closed. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And Anna's comment was really right. So um, maybe the one discomfort what we could have in tables case is that we need to specify like a clearly like exactly the same name. Of the column if you want to subset. Uh, but in data frames case, uh, it could be more relaxed <laughs> if you're making some mistakes. Mm -hmm. Is it also maybe that in the data frame case, the, it, the default is X and Y anyway, uh, or, or not? Maybe it's, it's too far fetched. <laughs> I don't know. Can we test somehow if you tell me you could try to see? Um, well, I don't know, maybe it's too much, uh, too complicated at the moment, but I think that if like, but maybe that's already related to a different operation. So for example, if you would make a ggplot, like a visualization, uh, and you would use a data frame, then there, I think you would need to specify X and Y. Uh, so it's it's actually a different matter. So it's, it's not really directly related to the data frame itself. Okay, I, yeah, let's, let's go on. <laughs> Uh, also, uh, I think there is some kind of difference between the last exercise because um, mm -hmm. when you are returning like this vector uh, C, A, B, C, and X, Y, Z from uh, uh, data frame, you are getting this vector like A, B, C, and this one. But when you are writing from table, table returns only tables. That's why you are seeing that A, B, C is D, B, L, S, A. Uh, type of that uh, you, you can see that it's the return um, data is table because it shows uh, the type of this uh, columns for right. example I think that x y z is character and uh, mm -hmm. abc is dbl so the return result is the same but their uh, type is different the first one is uh, vector mm -hmm. and the second one is table okay got it yes and you also know the uh, what what type of columns do you have? Yeah, characters. Table and... only returns table. So whenever you write, the result will be table as well. But for data frame, you can get list or vector. So you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good case. Thank you, Anna. You're welcome. Should we move to? Uh, another exercise uh yeah maybe we can go through um one one more at least or what is the popular vote <laughs> okay i'm fine with everything <laughs> <laughs> okay let's let's uh, try also the next one then at least if you have the name of the variable stored in the object for example, variable MPG. How can you extract the reference variable from the table? So as I know, you should just write the whole name. Like you put up the uh, table name, you put a dollar sign. And then um, if, you, if, if you stored already variable, it will offer you uh, the names of the variables. Okay, let's see here, D DF table. If you want, we already stored the names of the variables like A, B, C, and X, Y, Z. Yes, and it offers by itself A, B, C, or X, Y, Z. Do I understand correctly the question? Or for me, I'm actually confused a little bit about the reference variable. What what is meant here? Uh, I'm not sure. The name of the variable stored. Does someone else have an idea? Okay, let's keep one of the names. 
I think reference variable means this MPG they wrote here, like just, no? Uh, variable. Okay, maybe, yeah. So I guess the question is how can you extract this MPG from this yes, uh, object? I think that you so. Created, yeah. Yeah, I think so. And that is what we did already. Maybe he is this MPG they have in data sets, the cars, empty cars. Okay, do you want me to retrieve empty cars? But we created a new object var. Or... No, okay. Yes, the first variable is MPG. So okay, let's create a var. That means in this case, MP. Okay. Should I store this variable? Var MPG. It will be kept here in the global environment. Okay. MPG. And after that, so what was the question? Question was it? How can we extract that now? Okay, I can just display var and it will put MPG. Um, and Okay, empty cars to go. It will just display the whole column. If you put I think there. they want this one. And uh, I think it's the same. It works the same, it's the same way with data frame. No? Okay, let's see. Yes, the same. So I don't get what why we kept the variable here. The mean. Yeah, that's um, it's a little bit confusing. I maybe I'm misunderstanding the question. Um, maybe we have to write this like uh, assign a variable, not uh, to MPG, uh, MPG from like empty cars, like. Well, it's but it's a, it's just an example in this question. This uh, var mpg, it's it's just an example. It could be anything. Yes. Um, so I don't think it's related to empty cars uh, specifically. Yeah, exactly. Um, but the question is about how do you get this variable that you put into the new object called var? How can you extract this new variable? And I think actually maybe this um, what you did that you just print var. Yeah, var. Yeah, this is you can just retrieve all the stored variables by just writing the name. I guess yeah, that's one and probably the main connected. way. Yeah, but how it is connected to the table? I don't get that. One. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, I'm also not sure. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we can retrieve all the stored variables. Um, yeah, by mm, putting the name in the console. Okay. But maybe there could be some. Does this book have a um, like answers? I'm sorry. Does this book have answers? And uh, no, it uh, doesn't seem to have answers. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I think that's not that uh, big of a problem yeah. that we <laughs> are not sure of this answer completely. But it's uh, at least you know we have one solution. <laughs> Okay, good. So, do we want to continue trying to answer other questions or um, we are good to go? Well, I'm not sure. I think um, maybe the question number five, that's that's a bit interesting. We could experiment. What is that? Uh, what does table in frame do? And when might we use it? Maybe we could check that. Okay, let's check it. Error and table, okay. So yeah, okay. What does it say? I don't see the comment, full comment. Um, it says that it's, um, the argument X is missing with no default. Oh, okay. Um, so we maybe might have to specify something there. Or maybe you can, uh, maybe, you, yeah, or, or try. 
I put table here and there's error. Okay, maybe we can just see it, what does it mean. It must not have more than one dimension. Yeah, I think you can maybe read about it first and then we'll see what it is. In frame table, converting vectors to data frames and vice versa. In frame converts mean atomic frame vector. X mean value values the frame. I want to come in data frame table. So it has to be an atomic vector, this X that we are specifying there. So uh, does that mean that it cannot be, um, that it can be only one row basically of this table? So you have to specify also the row that uh, you're looking at. Maybe this uh, ABC or what was it? Um, one of the rows in the in the table that you created. Okay. Okay, I define A. Okay. In frame. I think maybe you might have to use table in the in the front, I'm not sure. Here? I uh, know in, in, in before the in frame. Okay, no, it's fine. And so it created, okay, I understand now. So I created a vector, uh, sorry, here, I created the a vector and a vector is the same as like the first column of the DF, DF table. And then using the in frame function or code. So I transformed the vector into the table. Okay, let's see the class of a to be sure what it is it's a numeric vector as i understand so and the frame function as i understand create it's a you can you can check the super a structure a then it should be table super a just sort of okay it's fine no just uh, str yes, str uh, no. Well, that says that it's also numeric and one. Uh, no, you should check uh, CTR in frame A because you have not saved this as a variable. A. Ah, yeah. Okay. I got what you told me. Yes, no, it's table. So in frame converts lists or vectors into table and the frame uh, returns into its original form. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. Okay, first of all, I will define like a B, let's BB, the in frame A, and I'll deframe it. Let's see the deframe B. So to so see, it's a mean number one, it's not anymore um, table. What about B? Can you check B as well? Yes. It's a table because I just define like a mean. Yeah. In frame A, is a B. Okay, this called mm -hmm. like a in frame, so it helps us to transform vectors into the table. Do you understand correctly? Yes, I think so. <laughs> but when when to use it? That's that's another question. Maybe that's um. Yeah, I don't know. I cannot come up with an idea when when it would be good to use this. Okay, I understand. It seems here x is only an atomic vector or in frame or a data frame with one or two columns. Uh -huh. If we have an atomic vector or data frame with one or two columns, 
No, no, no. If you want to use it in frame, then we need atomic vector. This is, a, this is how I understand this. But if you want to use the frame, then we need to have a, like a data frame with one or two columns. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> So uh, if I understand correctly, if I am sure that I want to just do something with just work with just two columns, uh, mm -hmm. do analyze with these two columns, I will use this in frame uh, to convert it in a table and will work with it. Am I right? Can you please ask more, sorry. So um, if I have like data frame, and I sure that for some kind of time, like I will use um, just two variables and I will need just two variables and will work with them. So uh, I will convert these variables with my data, this data frame, including just these two variables using in frame into tables. And if I want them back to data frames, then I will use the frame. But I can't use uh, in frame and the frame if I have more than uh, two variables, or can I? Okay, let's test it. Okay, for example, we know that Iris, like a data, Iris include more columns than two. Let's see an in frame. In frame. Iris is just data um, frame, so it does not work. And it has, uh, X must not have more than one dimension. It means that if we would like to in, use a in frame function, then we need the vector, atomic vector, which means that it should have like a, um, a stream of variables, like a one, one vector. So we just have to have just one row one row, yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is as I understand. You should have a vector. One row and two columns. Uh, no, only one column and one row. This is as I understand, but we can explore it more because- Oh, it's really the, uh, using the first column as name and the second column as values. The only one column and unnamed vector is returned. Uh, no, it tells you that so when you use a in frame function and you put here a, instead of x the vector name, then uh, the vector will be transformed into the table. And the first row will be the name of the vector, and second will be the value of the vector. Okay. That's how I understand it because we can define the name and the values yeah. for one variable. Yeah, okay. So value is the content of the, of the variable and name is like, let's say education and value can be one, two, three, for yeah. example. Okay. So vector will be transformed into column table. One column will be the names and second column will be the values of those. Okay. Names. This is how I understand. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have, there's, I don't know, there's one more question. Uh, maybe we can do that quickly as well. Um, and then we can wrap it up. Which one? Um, so the, the last one. question is about um, what option controls how many additional column names are printed at the footer of a table? What is the footer of the table? Um, um, yeah. So option. Um, I will go to the. I will stop sharing of this, uh, and I will go to the slides. I need to discuss their option. So I guess the the question is how um with what kind of a. Mm, 
code uh, should what function should we use um, so that we could see additional column names printed. So as I understand from the book, the code like a function options. And then if you will put like a table width equal to infinity, it will display all the uh, columns. Okay. So how many rows are there. And also yeah. if you want to see all rows, then we put options table print mean equals to infinity. Mm -hmm. but if you want to see all, like, all rows, we are using the like, second function. And if you want to see, let's try that. Yeah, that's probably, that's it, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm stuck sharing this and then go back to R. Option table print, okay. Here, okay, let's put. Uh, DF table, I guess. Yeah, but we need more, like a bigger uh, table, like oh. with this iris or empty pulse. Mm -hmm. Either is fine. We will print me. Wow. It does not display anything. <laughs> no. Maybe because we renamed the like data many times already. Yeah, I don't know if you have the empty cars tib uh, as such. Ah. No, no, we defined the options. Now let's let's display. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, it described. No, I did not describe all the rows. Yeah, but I think also empty cars doesn't actually have that many columns. So, so in this case, it ju it's just showing all of them or? No, no, this uh, code, like a, a print mean across the infinity should display all rows, as I understand. All oh, rows. rows, okay. You always, always show all rows. So if you want to show like all rows, we use that. And if you want to show all uh, columns, then we use table width. Okay, okay. Mm, I really don't know how it works, okay. Or maybe we just set a function, okay, table, just table dot print. And then let's go and print it all. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. I thought, well, what was my mistake? It, it's a, just a defining the general options for the table. We don't need to specify here the specific so like one to the name. So, yeah. Very good. Mm -hmm. And we could use the same type of code, but we will change mean with width. Yeah. If we display all the columns. But by default, uh, as I know, by default, uh, um, if we, okay, let's use new New York flights because it has a lot of columns. And let's see how it will be displayed. Uh, Uh, not found. Maybe you have to load it first. Have you installed it? Yeah, I installed it because I ran, I installed the package and I ran the code even. Okay. Oh. 
Mm. I don't know. Here, I install the package. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's installed. Yeah, okay. It's restarting, so it takes some time. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Now it doesn't want to do anything anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's tired. <laughs> okay, anyway, so we'll we just to sum up this. Yeah. Setting the options, we just, uh, instead of mean, we put widths and put infinity to display, like it could present all the columns and the difference. Yeah. And we don't need to define the name of the table in, in the yes. brackets. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very we good. Just need to put table print me Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so I think we can uh, we can start wrapping up with this chapter. Um, it is. Uh, yeah, it is really, uh, it's not not that uh, difficult. So we can also go through it again uh, whenever, whenever you need to. <laughs> but uh, thank you again, Anna, for, for taking us through this chapter and for giving a short overview of this uh, chapter of the tables. Yeah, thank you very much uh, as well. And as I promised for the next meeting, I will try to find the response to all your questions. Yeah, thank you. Um